here at the Tarkanian Classic with Pepperdine University Assistant Coach John Empleman. Coach, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Want to talk a little bit about um, recruiting and the nature of, of it as a perspective of a college coach and what you might see differently between uh, the, in a high school setting and what you evaluate in an AAU grassroots setting. So talk a little bit about those uh, basic differences, if there's any. Yeah, Ronnie, thanks for having me. Uh, the AAU settings for us is almost at a pure convenience, you know, I mean, it's being able to evaluate lots of guys under one roof and then the level of competition being pretty good. Um, so there you're really able to judge guys' talent compared to other Division I players um, and see, you know, are they the guy that wants the ball at the end of the game and, you know, things like that. And then the high school setting is you almost see the daily habits more because those are coaches that are around all the time. They might not be getting 10 pairs of free shoes and being put up in a hotel and they got teammates that aren't as, as talented as them. Sure. So you almost get a better feel for guys' characters and habits in the high school setting and I think you can get a better feel for their talent and how they are competitive against guys that are comparable to them talent-wise in the AAU setting. So I think they both have their value. Sure. I wish we were allowed to watch the summer high school stuff. You know, right. we can Summer only leagues, right leagues. exactly because they're playing them anyways, sure. and you know there's so many transfers at the Division One level, and I think a big part of that is misevaluation. And the more we could be out would be more helpful, but I don't know if that's going to change. Correct. So, do you think the high transfer rate, whether it's about 40, 50 percent, Tyrone, is that a direct correlation to the amount of times you guys can view, or do you think it's just uh, something else that? I think it's coaches' fault at every level, including the college coaches, and then the, the kids too. You know, I mean, I'm 29, so I don't want to talk like my generation, but it seems like, you know, if guys aren't getting playing time right away, that it's not the right fit, you know. And I've seen just looking on Twitter and stuff this year, more guys transferring mid year than I think I've seen in years past. And, a good example of that is the Elijah Thomas. Right, kid exactly. Yeah, and I mean, obviously he was a high major recruit and stuff. But you look at the Frank Kaminsky's of the world that people had all this of his numbers. We averaged two points a game as a freshman. He's the national player of the year as a senior. And I don't. People don't have patience for that, you know. And look at that. Yeah, I think it's too. You know, maybe it's their their club coaches or you know pressure. You know, maybe go somewhere else. But then also on our end too, we take guys that maybe aren't good fits all the time and. So it's just as much the college coach's fault as I think the kids and the, the youth coaches, but I think being able to evaluate guys more would limit that a little bit, and I don't think it could hurt. Do you see in the, in the high school setting where guys generally maybe the top player or the top option on his team, and then the AU setting, he may be the third or fourth option, is that valuable? Do you see guys that like, okay, well, we thought he can play at that level, but he kind of shrinks or he kind of wilts away. At, at playing with other uh, good level, high level players or playing with players at that ability. you see that? Yeah, I do. And there's no always and nevers, you know. I mean, sometimes guys are joining teams, you know, Jumping a day teams. before the tournament, sure. you know, and so they don't have a feel, for, the coaches don't have a feel for them and chemistry and stuff like that. But it is interesting when it's the highest level of players, you know, if guys want the ball or not and, you know, how they are against that. So. I, I do think that, that there is some truth to that, but I think each case is kind of, you know, unique because I think there's examples of guys that are maybe on a, a, a perfect. I worked for the Pump Brothers for a year, and uh, Clay Thompson and Paul George were on their number two team. Correct. You know, and I mean, go. I mean, the rest is history. Look at those guys' careers. So yeah, and you get the wares and some guys like that on the number one team, and so it's, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. Science. It isn't. It isn't. It's not exact science. That makes sense. And, a lot of people don't look at that. Going back to the to the Kaminsky thing, where you you know you don't have the patience, and you talked about your age, and you talked about Twitter and the information age. Do you think it's just because the information turns over so much faster than it used to that people can't be patient to see the bigger long road outcome? Yeah, it's, in, it's instant gratification. You know, I think that's kind of the deal. We don't have to deal with it as much at the mid major level as the because, quite frankly, we deal less with probably the club coaches or maybe handlers and stuff yeah. than the high major guys have right. to. Um, so I can't speak from that perspective, but sure. I do think that, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, everyone can look up their stats and stuff and you get the DMP coach's decision. And right away. Yeah, I mean, so <laughs> there's it peer pressure to that too. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I do see people after games and it's a club coach and he 
posts his player stats right. immediately, yeah. 10 seconds after the yeah. game's over. And you didn't have that even, you know, 10 years ago. You definitely didn't have that 15 to 20 years ago. Uh, talking a little bit back to the, to the high school game. You watch a lot of high school games, and we were at a recent event. Obviously, we're at a high school event now, it's Arcanian Classic. What, what advice would you give a young player as you're in the stands when he's playing his game? Not necessarily, obviously, you got to shoot well, you got to have the necessary size and length, but actually the way he plays. What, what advice would you give to a young player out there who's looking to play at your guys' level? Yeah, and speaking for myself and Pepperdine, but I think a lot of coaches feel this way, the sure. intangible stuff at a high school setting is as important, if not more important, than sure. the intangible. Because the way I look at it is, we know if a guy can shoot or not. So, sure. so we're evaluating some guy and he goes 0 for 7. Yeah. We're not going to be like, ah, we're not going to take him. Correct. But if he comes off and doesn't want to give you know, his teammates high fives or has the yeah. dead fish or isn't in a huddle, yeah. that's the stuff where we're like, we don't want to deal with that on a daily basis, you know, and we kind of try to recruit. We call it OKGs, our kind of guys. And that, that stuff's huge. You know, what type of teammate are they going to be? And, so it's, and especially in the high school setting where guys are even more talented than their teammates, are they getting frustrated with when a guy doesn't catch a pass? Sure. You know, are they going and patting him on the butt and be like, hey, you got the next one, man. You know, so that's, that's invaluable. And I, I think guys mature, so it's the same thing. There's not always a nevers. Guys can improve that. But a lot of times it translates to the to the collegiate level too. Correct, and plus, like you said, you guys they're not at the talent such a superior talent where they're going to be leaving in one year, how's, so they may yeah. not develop. So you guys going to have for four or five years. Yep. So you want to like, man, we don't want to deal with that. Well, and how's their right. motor too? You know, like are, are they playing to the level of the competition, or or are they are they trying to be like competing with themselves? You know, and I'm going to go out there and show how good I am and play hard every possession because you see that sometimes too where guys are uh, yeah I don't have to play as hard this game and so we're gonna win right and uh, yeah how, how does that uh, look when you guys evaluate like when a guy's by far the best of, of the 10 players on the court and uh, do you guys kind of look and say well okay we'll see if he brings it every day or do you kind of understand that you know kids can be kids and you kind of like, hey, you know, he didn't have a good game, and maybe somebody can give him some advice about that. I think you have to take everything into account. I mean, I'm in my third year as an assistant. I have a lot to learn. So I mean, sure. there's been examples of guys where I've written off watching, you know, maybe like, oh, man, his motor because he was the most talented guy and didn't play well. And then you watch him in college, and they're in a competitive setting where everyone's really talented, and they thrive. They, they wake up. You know, so, it. and where I'm like, man, I didn't think that guy was going to be like that. Sure. So, but then there are also those examples of where, you know, it doesn't translate. So um, it's interesting, you know, but for us too, like you said, I mean, we're not taking one and dones. We're kind of the points so far outweigh the possible problems and maybe only have to deal with it for a year. So I think that stuff's even more important, you know, for us is because kind of how coachable they are, I think will kind of determine how much they're able to develop too. So um, it's something that we really, really look at. And view in terms of skill, what is the most couple most translatable skills you've seen so far where you know that if this kid uh, runs a break hard, if he rebounds, or whatever it may be, what translates that Harley doesn't hardly miss when you go to the yeah. next level? I think guys playing with confidence and toughness, those two things, you know, I think translate. I and mean, guys that are, regardless of who they're playing against, if they're out Same there playing person. confident, then when they get to college, they're not going to care that they're playing at Gonzaga or at BYU, yeah. right? And then the toughness thing too, you know. I mean, as far as next play mentality and not willing to get on the floor. And our freshman that we got from Etiwanda High School, Cameron Edwards, who's having a pretty good year for us. You know, he's skill-wise, you know, his shot needs to improve and things like that, but. He's aggressive. He's just a basketball player. If there's a driving lane open, he's going to take it. It doesn't matter if we're in Poly Pavilion or Bishop Gorman. And he's tough. So I think that's why he's having some early success for us. That's interesting because, like you said, all college players need to improve, but the little intangibles can help them overcome where they may be uh, not able to do that if they didn't have those intangibles. They wouldn't be able to thrive or get as many minutes as they would like coming in. So the last question, I, or the last thing I want you to comment on is uh, talk a little bit about, we were at a high school game and we saw a kid and he wasn't a college level player and he uh, was jacking up shots, his team wasn't very good, his body language was bad. Um, and I remember you saying, you know, God, I wish I could tell that kid what he's doing wrong, so even if he wants to play junior college or something. So what, you gave a couple of things that you would 
message you would give the kid out there, you know, as a college coach watching, you know, what you should be doing and how you should conduct yourself on the court? Yeah, there's a good quote, like, body language doesn't whisper, it screams, you know, and I think that's the thing. I remember exactly the game we were talking about, and the team was getting blown out, and the guy basically was just like, treated like he was at a men's league or something, was just going to jack shots, and it was only about him. And I mean, I played Division three basketball at a non-scholarship level, and was the ninth man in an eight-man rotation, you know, but I was a really good teammate, and so I took pride in that stuff. So I think that's even more kind of like high alert for me. And so when I see guys that aren't doing that, it bothers me. And you're always being evaluated, you know. I mean, I might be watching a guy and text my junior college buddy or my buddy that coaches Division two or Division three, and you know, who knows, one guy having bad body language that, you know, just doesn't know that we're there or knows we're there, that could – it could affect their whole recruitment. and They don't uh, even know it. Right. So it's uh, always being evaluated for sure. It's like you said with Twitter too and stuff, man. I mean, yeah. it, it gets out there. It gets out there, people. Yeah. Well, Coach, I appreciate your time, and uh, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Ronnie. Okay, thank you.